How's it going everybody? This is Peter Bush. About one year ago, I made a video about my DIY grid tie solar system. Now this was a really, really cheap system. I only had two panels, one grid tie thing. There's no battery in it. And my estimate at the time was that the ROI was going to be about three years. It hasn't been three years yet. So I have not made $300 to pay for that system just yet. Since that time, I learned a lot about the whole system, how much electricity it actually generates over an entire year. And so today I'm gonna to give you guys an update. This video is brought to you by Sun Gold Power. They supplied me with two more solar panels so that I can add on to my grid tie system. As you guys know right now, my capacity is two 100 watt panels. So adding these two is another two 100 watt panels. In total, that's 400 watts. My grid tie inverter is 500 watts. These two panels right now is not installed yet, but I'm going to write on this video and then show you guys before and after. Let me address some concerns and comments in my previous video. Number one, people said, this is a DIY system. You normally need contracts with your utility in order to tie something to their grid. Number two, if you do some sort of grid tie system, you definitely need a circuit breaker before it enters in into the socket of your home. Now this is a grid tie inverter. If there is no power on the grid already, it's not going to put more power back. So then if for some reason the grid is off, this system is not going to make the wires for utility workers live. With that said, let me just hook these solar panels up. I'm just going to put them on top of my shed. I don't really tie it down or anything because it's low enough to the ground. And most of the time you're just worried about like really high winds is gonna pick these up and then just gonna toss it somewhere off your roof. Now, because these are so low to the ground, I decided, well, I'm just gonna lay there. I'm not gonna drill into the roof or anything. So all of this is definitely educational purposes only. This is definitely for my own educational purpose as well, because I've learned a lot. I've learned about this MPPT tracking thing. I've learned how much solar I can actually get. It's actually really entertaining to see how many watts is coming in on a bright sunny day. Let me hook these up right now. These are the two panels and you can see the voltage here is uh, 18 to 22 volts or so. I bought a 24 volt grid tie inverter so I need to connect these in series. I'm gonna connect this to this guy right here. And now I need to connect this guy and this guy in parallel to the panels I already have. So I purchased these Y connector things and that's how I'm gonna do it. This guy goes in here, connect this one and this one, connect that together. Now this is basically what it looks like. I'm gonna connect my other panel to this one and this over here. And the wires that goes to my grid tie is going to come out of these two points. I have the wire actually coming in through the window right here. This is a DIY thing. And it goes to my grid tie inverter like that. 500 watts. And I'm actually using speaker cables over here. It's just what I have. And over here I got the power cable to a kilowatt right here. And we can see right now I'm generating 8.6 watts. This is what the sky looks like right now. It's uh, really cloudy because of the fires. There's actually a bunch of ashes that's falling down. I placed my solar panels on top of my shed and the wires kind of runs down and then into my house over here. So I'm just gonna add these to my system right now. It should show maybe like 18 watts, hopefully, if it works. Okay, I have to wear a mask right now. Ashes, smells really bad right now. Orange outside, Armageddon. This just fell on my panels today, look at this. Usually it would take like an entire year to develop this much stuff. And these are my new ones. And unsurprisingly, my power output roughly doubled, which is good. If I clean off that solar panel, the dirty one, 
it probably will increase a little bit more. So let me go and do that right now. This is after cleaning it, so maybe I didn't do much. Maybe it's only half a watt more. That literally only took me 10 minutes to add the capacity. Keep in mind that I'm only putting this on top of my shed and also I'm using the existing wiring into my grid tie inverter. Now this is what I have right now. Normally your utilities come into your fuse panel. Your fuse panel distributes into different networks into your house. I have to say right when you connect to your house, you also need another fuse before you tie to the grid tie inverter. This is the grid tie inverter over here and it plugs into your house. It's 500 watts. These are 100 watt panels and I have them in series for a 24 volt system. And before I have them connected like so. Now I bought two of these Y connector things. So they're gonna come in like this, Y connector. These are the Sun Gold Power one. And I'm also connecting them in series like so. So then you just connect them like normal in parallel. So this one would go over here, this one goes over here, this one goes over there, this one goes over there in parallel. So as you guys saw before, I had about nine watts of power given the really gloomy day, all the clouds in the sky. I added a second set. Now it's about 18 watts, 19 watts. So this is in line with what I expect and it appears that the system is working okay. This is a system that does not care about batteries. You're not going to connect a battery to this and they're not going to have an ability for you to connect any kind of batteries to this because we're not going to be charging anything. This system is only going to supply you with AC power and the way I've set it up is that I need to use up all of the AC power that I generate or else I'm essentially giving it to the utilities for free. In fact, this is the way I designed this system because I don't want to have a really large cost where my ROI will take maybe 20 years or something. So with the usage of my previous system right here, I plugged it into my kilowatt for the entire day and I can monitor that on a bright sunny day, I got about 0.8 kilowatt per day. This is for a sunny, sunny day. So you can't really multiply this by 365 depending on which part of the United States you're in or which part of the world you're in, you might have more sun or less sun. So I'm going to use a little fudge factor to compensate for the days where you don't have sun, compensate for winter. So I'm just going to call this like 75% of the time I'm going to have that. Maybe it's less. It's about 25 cents per kilowatt hour that I have to pay. Depending on what kind of electricity plan you have with your utility, your rates might vary a little bit. Now 0.8 kilowatts times 25 cents per kilowatt. This means I'm going to generate less than one kilowatt, right? So it's going to be less than 25 cents. So 20 cents a day, this is what this is going to generate. And over a period of 30 days in the one month, you're going to get about $6 on a nice sunny summer day. So I'm going to add my fudge factor of 75%. So every year I'm going to get $72 a year without fudge factor. With the fudge factor, I'm going to consider about $54. This was $100, $100, $100. So in my initial calculation, I thought that I might be able to make back the money within about three years or four years or so. So in reality, it looks more like it's gonna take about six years for me to get a return of the amount I paid. But this is not the only thing I'm considering. I also like this system because I've learned a lot about solar systems. I've learned that you need to put a breaker here. I also know that this cheap grid tie inverter a lot of people said that if you load it close to the limit, it's not going to last as long. So now that I'm going to connect this thing to here, it's going to be the 400 watt with a 500 watt limit. So I'm running at an 80% capacity of this thing. This thing is going to run a little bit hotter because I'm pushing rather than this much power, I'm going to push twice as much power. And on a bright sunny day, these guys, what I saw, it was generating about 140 watts, never 200 watts or so. So I estimate this is also gonna do another 140 watts realistically. So realistic, realistically, this is really 300 watts that's gonna put into this 500 watt inverter. That's still within the range. I probably would not want to put another set here because on a really sunny day, it might just push it over and, you know, cause some sort of meltdown. And it's always a good thing to have a little bit of headroom uh, for your inverter 
just so that it can handle things just in case it pushes a lot more power than you expected. So let me just show you guys what happens to your utility bill over here. This is an example of one of the days where it's a pretty good day where between 11, 12, 1 and 2 p.m. I had a lot of sun. So then it essentially generated all the power I need whenever I'm not cooking or whatnot. And it only consumed maybe 10 watts. Those little bars you see down there, it's less than 10 watts of power for the entire house. So when you look at how much electricity I'm generating, just look at this red line over here. I get roughly realistically about six hours of really good amount of electricity that's generated. This is mainly because I put it right behind the house and the sun moves, right? And eventually the shade of the house, because this is a two story house, the shade of the house just covers those solar panels. So I'm not getting the ideal amount of sun because I'm not mounting on the roof. If you're mounting it on the roof, if I were to do it, I really, really want to put some windproof brackets or something so that it just doesn't blow off. It's gonna be a safety issue because if it ever blows off and hits someone, well, you get a lawsuit on your hands. Speaking of lawsuits, this is for educational purpose only. Don't try this at home. I'm only doing this just to learn for myself over here. But I do have to thank Sun Gold Power for providing me these panels so that I can sort of expand my system over here to get a little bit more solar. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed this update video on my grid tie solar system. Now it's a good 400 watts. Don't forget to give me a like, comment down below. Let me know if you're gonna attempt this at your own risk, of course. And push that subscribe button and ring that bell icon. Thanks for watching. One more thing I forgot to mention is that if I were to add another set of panels, I could definitely go get another 500 watt grid tie inverter and then start adding panels for that. So then I don't actually have to buy a 1000 watt grid tie inverter. I can just add another 500 watts and just plug it into you know a different plug in the house, just maybe right below it. I can add yet another one, another one, another one until you know it's, it's too much capacity. And like I said before, you do need a contract with your utilities to feed electricity back into the grid.